Hello friends. Owl is back with me again today. We're going to talk about the sense of hearing. And the reason Owl wanted to come back to talk with us a little bit about that is because Owl has a special adaptation. That's something about his body. Just like we learned about in the last uh, chapter where we were learning about the sense of sight, um, how the eyes we learned are here at the front of the face because they're predators and they need to be able to focus both of their eyes on their prey. Also, owls have a facial disc, which is this white piece here, and that helps to channel any sound, even the smallest little sound that they hear, towards little tiny ear holes that they have back here. And so I wanted to bring Owl back today to talk also about our sense of hearing. All ears. Are your ears big or small, flat to your head or sticking out? Ears come in all shapes and sizes, from the tiny feather-covered holes of birds to the huge flappers of elephants. No matter what they look like, ears help animals in many ways. With them, animals can sense danger approaching, listen for food and water, communicate with other animals, and help locate a mate. Many animals have very sensitive ears and can hear sounds that we can't. They can also move their ears around to hear better. Try wiggling your ears and then read on to find out more about some special ears. If you were a kit fox, that's what is, this is showing us here in this picture, you would have very large pointed ears. They would help you hear many sounds and make it easier to find and catch your food in the dark. You would be able to move your ears around. This would help you figure out where sounds were coming from and to hear them more clearly. Your long ears would help you keep your cool in your hot, dry desert home, since body heat escapes through your ears faster than anywhere else. Also, deers have ears like this that they can move around. And at the end of this, we're gonna be learning how to do deer ears ourselves. But we'll notice the shape of their ears is about the same as this kid fox. Have you ever watched a dog or cat perk up its ears and move them around when listening to a sound? Oh, well, I have. Both of our cats and dogs do that. Their large movable ears trap more sound waves from the air and help them hear better than you can. Try on a bigger ear and hear what you're missing. So all you need is a piece of paper, regular piece of paper, some tape, and then some music or other sounds that you can play or even just the noises in your house. Roll the piece of paper into a cone shape and tape it. The narrow end should be big enough to fit over your outer ear. That should kind of fit around your ear. Hold the narrow end of the cone up to one ear, ear and plug the other ear with your finger like this down here. Listen to some music or other sounds with the cone and without it. Point the cone away from each sound and then toward it. What do you notice? You should find that the sounds seem louder with the cone. A larger ear can catch more sound waves from the air and funnel them to your eardrum where you hear. When the cone is pointed away from the sound, the sound should seem quieter. As you turn the cone toward the sound, it becomes louder. This is like a cat or dog turning its ears toward a sound to hear it better. Ears do more than hear. Animals that live in very cold places have small ears. Small ears lose less body heat so the animals stay warmer. An elephant's huge ears help it keep cool and they can also scare off enemies. When an elephant flaps its big ears, other animals back off. Sounds right or left. Two ears are better than one. 
When you hear a sound, you usually hear it first in one ear and then in another, depending on which ear is closest to the sound. This helps you tell where the sound is coming from. Animals use sound to find food and mates and to avoid danger, so locating sounds can be the key to survival. Try this simple activity to see how your ears work together. Number one, close your eyes and have a friend, a parent, a sibling, stand somewhere in the room and clap their hands. When you hear the sound, point toward it. Have your friend move around the room and try it again a few times. Now plug one of your ears with your finger and repeat the activity. Is there any difference? You should find it's easier to tell where the sound is coming from when both ears are working together. If you think ears are always on a creature's head, then you're in for a surprise. A grasshopper's ears are on its abdomen. That's like its stomach. While crickets and katydids have ears on their legs. I'm really glad my ears are not on my legs. Let's hear it for ears. Your ears can hear a lot of sounds, but some are too high or too low for people to hear. A cat can hear the high-pitched squeaks of an unseen mouse, and a dog will answer to a whistle that we can't hear. And don't try eavesdropping on elephants. They communicate with rumbling noises, so low that people can't hear them. For some animals, hearing is more important for survival than seeing. If you were a bat, you would make very high-pitched sounds, too high for people to hear. The sounds would bounce off objects nearby and come back to your ears as echoes. The echoes would help you hunt in the dark and avoid obstacles. This is called echolocation. You would have large ears to hear the echoes and figure out the size, speed, and location of the objects. You would be able to hear, find, and catch an insect in less than half a second. Wow, that's an amazing superpower or adaptation. Go batty. Bats hunt by bouncing high-pitched sounds off nearby objects and listening to echoes that come back. You can use a small rubber ball or a tennis ball to hear how a bat ear hears. Stand about two meters, which is about probably about as tall as your parents, that distance away from a wall, and throw a ball at it. The ball represents the sound sent out by the bat. Notice how long it takes for the ball to come back to you. Take a large step closer to the wall and throw the ball at the same speed again. Keep moving closer to the wall and noting how long it takes a ball to return to you. Number two, have a friend hold up a large board up in front of them, about, again, about the same distance, two meters away from you. Throw the ball at the board and notice how long it takes to come back to you. Now have your friend walk slowly toward you and taking baby steps while you continue to throw the ball against the board. What do you notice? You should find that the closer you are to the wall, the sooner the ball comes back to you. A bat can tell how close it is to an object by how quickly the echoes return to its ears. As your friend moves closer to you, the ball will come back sooner. This is how a bat can tell if an object is moving and how quickly. Some moths can hear the bat's high-pitched sounds and drop to the ground to avoid being eaten. Underwater echoes. Whales, dolphins, and porpoises use echolocation to find food and avoid danger underwater. They make sounds that travel through the water <clears throat> and bounce off obstacles, that's things in their way, fish, and other creatures. By listening to the echoes, these mammals can travel safely through the water and find and catch their prey. They are so magical in the way that they can do echolocation. They can even find rings and locate. There's been all kinds of research done about how dolphins and bats can use echolocation and whales. Um, at the end of this video, there's a song about dolphin locomotion that I think you'll enjoy. 
feeling with sound. Some animals can sense sound even though they don't have ears. They can't hear sounds the way you do. They feel them instead. A mole doesn't have any ears, but it feels vibrations in its underground burrows. Oh, that's just like our little friend, the gopher that has been in the garden lately, burrowing tunnels underground. Vibrations can mean that food or danger is near. You can feel sound with this simple trick. You'll need a wooden board and a hammer. Lay the board on the ground and hold on to one end while a friend hammers on the other end. What do you feel? You should find that you can feel the wood vibrating with your hands and hear the sound of hammering with your ears. Even if you couldn't hear, you would still feel the vibrations through the wood. If you were a mole, another or another earless creature such as a snake or earthworm, you would feel the vibrations made by an approaching animal. Even though you couldn't hear the sounds of its footsteps, you could tell which vibrations mean food and which ones mean danger. This is a mole or a gopher, my little friend from the garden. And you notice that they have tiny, tiny ears, very tiny eyes, because they live mostly underground and light doesn't matter too much to them. But they use, primarily they feel the vibrations. They can use their whiskers and their skin to do that. And they dig, 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 dig underground. Um, so their sense of hearing and their sense of touch are much more important to gophers and moles. I'm a dolphin of the ocean blue And I have a song I want to sing for you About the ways I communicate The song has sounds I hope you'll help me make Click, 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 clickety-clack I send the sound and it bounces back Echoes in my mind Helps me see what's up ahead in the deep blue sea I said click, 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 whistle and squawk It's just a way that a dolphin talks I call my friends so we can play In a fun-loving dolphin way Swimming, swimming, oh so gracefully Fishing for some food to give us energy We leap high, we dive deep With click, 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 clickety clack. I send a sound and it bounces back. Echoes in my mind. Helps me see what's up ahead in the deep blue sea. I said click, 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 whistle and squawk. It's just a way that a dolphin talks. I call my friends so we can play in a fun loving dolphin way. Swimming, swimming, oh so. With click, 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 clickety clack. I send the sound and it bounces back. Echoes in my mind. Helps me see what's up ahead in the deep blue sea. I said click, 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 whistle and squawk. It's just a way that a dolphin talks. I call my friends so we can play in a fun loving dolphin way. I am a dolphin of the ocean blue, and now I'd love to hear some sounds from you. You can click and squeal just like me. Pretend you're a dolphin playing in the sea. Loving dolphin way in a fun 
today to your sit spot you're going to use deer ears to or fox ears whichever you prefer um, to use your sense of hearing to make observations of what's happening around you you're going to um, cup your hands like this and you're going to put them around your ears and you're going to be as quiet as you can and you're going to notice what sounds are constant? They're like always there. They don't go away, kind of in the background. Maybe there are sounds like traffic in the distance or the wind. And then you're gonna think and notice what sounds are sudden, like a bird or like this little creature I have somewhere up in my gutter that's squeaking and making noises, maybe building a nest out there. I hear some children playing. I hear different sounds. Those are more sudden. Then I'm gonna change the position of my ears. I'm gonna do it backwards and see if I notice different sounds. Oh, I do. And by the position of my ears, I can change the space that I'm gathering the sound vibrations from. Kind of like a satellite dish that is positioned in order to receive signals from space and can be moved and rotated. Also, notice what sounds are from living things and what sounds are from non-living things. We're gonna be learning more in the weeks to come about how we know what things are living and what things are non-living. So I want you to be thinking about that. Enjoy your time out in your sit spot with your dear ears today. When you're done with your dear ears, you'll come back to your iPad and you will use this form that's attached to the Seesaw activity to share with me what you observed with your dear ears. What do you think about what you noticed? What makes you say that? So if you think that a sound is from something specific, tell me more about what makes you say that. And what do you wonder about the sounds that you heard today? Then share it with me on Seesaw so I can see what you observed. Have fun.